thank you guys for this opportunity to stand uh, here and put the word in front of you. Um, thank God. Um, Steve, great message. Thank you for that. It really challenged me to sit here and just in awe of the presence of God here. Um, if you have your Bibles with you, um, quickly just turn to Luke chapter 24, verse 49. This is going right in line with uh, the theme Holy Spirit, uh, which is our theme tonight, and just kind of in line with what Steve was speaking about. Um, Luke chapter 24, verse 49. It reads, And behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you. But stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. Bow our heads and a word of prayer. Jesus, we love you. We just thank you for this opportunity to come in your presence. It says in your word, when two or three are gathered, that you are here, God. And we thank you that you're here, your presence is here, and more importantly, your Holy Spirit is dwelling in this place, God. We just thank you for this night. I pray that it will be a blessing to everyone that's here, God, people that could not make it. I just pray for your blessing throughout this place, God. And thank you for all that you do. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. In this portion, Luke chapter 24, verse 49, we see a scene where Jesus is about to go up to heaven. And Jesus leaves the people, his disciples, his disciples specifically, with something. It reads one more time, Behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you, but stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. The point here is that there is power coming from on high upon the disciples. Jesus said to his disciples that his promise, the power of the Holy Spirit, will come upon you. This is the promise that Jesus made. And when you fast forward a little bit, right, you go to Acts chapter 1, verse 8. In Acts chapter 1, verse 8, you see Luke writing a letter to Theophilus. And here on Acts chapter 1, verse 8, it reads, um, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. So Luke is kind of reiterating this promise that Jesus left with his disciples. So fast forwarding over to Acts from Luke, we can see that the Holy Spirit is now upon the disciples. And the first thing that disciples did throughout uh, once they received power is they went out and performed miracles, right? They had all this power and they're just so excited and they went out and performed all these miracles. They started preaching the word and they started to form the church. Uh, once the church was formed, right, in the, in the verse 8, it says, um, You will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria to the ends of the earth. So after they formed the church in their local area, they started to go out, right? They started to go out to reach more people to the ends of the earth. Um, I want to have a title for this message that I'm about to tell you guys. Um, it's Spirit Breakout. Um, if we fast forward more over to Acts 16, verse 16, I want to read about Paul and Silas. Paul and Silas, I like to say, they were the original missionaries, the OG missionaries, if you will. These guys went out to the ends of the earth to reach, and on this journey, we can see a little story that I want to read. So Acts 16, verse 16, as we were going to the place of prayer, we were met by a slave girl who had a spirit of divination and brought her owners much gain for, by fortune telling. She followed Paul and us crying out, these men are servants of the Most High God who proclaim to you the way of salvation. And this she kept doing for many days. Paul, having become greatly annoyed, turned and said to the Spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And it came out that very hour. So here we see Paul was annoyed with this girl who was possessed by a demon. And he decided to, decided to exert his power that was within him to heal this girl from this demon. And keep reading. It says, but when her owners saw that their hope of gain was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace before the rulers. So if I can make this a little contemporary to you guys, imagine you're walking down the Bronx on Florida Road, um, and you see these guys playing games trying to make money, right? These, this is what these guys were doing. They were just standing there on the side of the street, if you will, in like the hood of Philippi, I believe. Um, they were there, and they were trying to like make some money off this girl who was demon-possessed. So Paul and Silas were like those missionaries, like us going to give tracts. We were walking down, and we see this girl, and they're sort of abusing her trying and trying to get money out of it, right? So we, come, we become annoyed. Imagine we're Paul and Silas. We become annoyed, and we go over there, and we just stand there, and all the people around placing bets, whatever the case is, or paying money to hear their fortune. Um, 
and we decide to say a little prayer and cast this demon out. So once we cast the demon out, and she's not telling fortunes anymore, and she's not being productive or giving them the opportunity to make any more money, they know that we did this, so they become annoyed with us because we, we're the only outsiders, right? We have our shirt ties and our nice pants and we're standing there giving out tracks and everyone else is in like ripped jeans and like whatever the case is and they're standing there trying to make money and we look like outsiders and they decide to just gang up on us. They bring their whole gang squad over in the hood and they, they try to grab us and bring us and they bring us to the ruler, their, their gang leader if you will, right? So keep reading, verse 20. And when they had brought them to the to the magistrates, they said, These men are Jews and they are disturbing our city. They advocate customs that are not lawful for us as Romans to accept our practice. So these gang leaders said, We're Indians and we don't belong here. Um, the crowd joined in attacking them, and the magistrates tore the garments off them and gave orders to beat them with rods. So the whole gang crew is now beating us up, and nobody knows why they're beating us up. They just all join in, because once a crowd joins in, everyone just does it for the fun of it, right? So, and when they, and when they had afflicted, in, in, inflicted many b blows upon them, they threw them into prison, ordering the jailer to keep them safely. Having received this order, he put them into the inner prison and fastened their feet in the stocks. So now we're in jail, right? We release this demon and now we're in jail. So I want to like try to get in the mind of Paul and Silas. The reason I made it sort of contemporary is because like I was trying to put us in that place. So if we can get some minds of Paul and Silas. Um, Paul and Silas just released a girl uh, from being demon possessed. I don't know if they've ever done this before. I don't know if they've ever experienced power like go out of them like that and release this girl from a spirit. But I'm trying to think like, wouldn't these guys like feel like, man, like now I'm in jail after releasing someone and breaking their bondage? Um, how, how would you think these guys feel when they're in jail and they feel like stuck in prison when they did something they didn't deserve to be in there before, you know what I mean? So when they were in this situation, they could have had all these thoughts like, God, maybe if I should have never released her from that demon. I could have kept walking and kept reaching out to different people, avoided that whole situation, and I wouldn't have been here. Um, they could have been thinking, man, like, if only, like, I just didn't heal her, or, like, if only I wasn't in that situation, if only I wasn't making that journey, if only I stayed home with my family and friends, if only I was hanging out somewhere else and not in the hood of Philippi. Um, they could have been thinking all these things while they were in prison. But it's crazy because what did they do, right? If you keep reading, about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. And the prisoners were listening to them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaking. And immediately all the doors were open and everyone's bonds were unfastened. So what did Paul and Silas do in this situation? They decided to praise God. When we're filled with the Holy Spirit and we have the power within us, no prison can really hold us, right? No circumstance in our life can really hold us. Because when we're held down in that situation, we let the Spirit break out. The Spirit within us comes and we release that completely. We let it break out. When we let the Spirit conquer the situation, the situation cannot hold us down, right? So Paul and Silas here, they decided to pray and sing songs of worship that is like the craziest thing you could ever do in a prison. I've never been to prison. I don't know anything about prison, but I'm pretty sure nobody's like happy in prison right now. I don't think anyone's sitting there thinking like, man, I'm so happy to be here. Or like nobody's going about their day thinking, man, maybe I'll make another friend today. Or, I'm pretty sure everyone's in there with like this depressed mindset, trying to like get through day by day. Um, it's just a terrible surrounding in prison. But these guys get into prison, and they're like the happiest people there. They're, they're like held down, they're guarded, but they're singing and praising God because they let the Spirit break out. Um, so as they were praying at midnight, there was an earthquake, and it split right through the prison, right? And if we keep reading, um, verse 29, verse 27, when the jailer woke and saw that the prison doors were open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself, supposing that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul cried out with a loud voice, Do not harm yourself, for we are all here. And the jailer called for lights and rushed in 
And trembling with fear, he fell down before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? So Paul and Silas praise and worship God, and the prison doors were open. I don't know what type of situation you might be going through in your life or what sort of prison you might be in. It might be a work prison, it might be a relationship prison, it might even be sometimes a church prison, right? We come to church Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Sunday, and it just becomes a routine. We go to school Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, th Friday, it becomes a routine. We go to work Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, all the way to Friday, and it becomes a routine. And we get into this routine which becomes sort of a prison that we're stuck in. We make life to be a prison for us, and we limit ourselves from being used by God by constantly coming and going in our routine life. Uh, we might be in a situation where nothing just seems to be working out for us. We're trying to reach out to a friend, they're not going to church. We're trying to get that promotion, and we're not getting it. We're trying to get that grade for that class, and we're not getting it. That wouldn't be our prison. Whatever the prison is, when you let the spirit break out, not only will you release yourself from that bondage, but you release others around you from that same bondage. Um, chances are, when you're going through life on a day-to-day -day basis, you're not walking alone. There's always people around you, right? You're always plugged into some type of community. Even if you're not plugged into a community, you're with a bunch of people that aren't in communities. Uh, there's always people around you. There's always people sometimes even putting you down. Um, if you didn't get that promotion, there's someone who did. Um, if you didn't get that grade, there's someone who did. If you couldn't reach to, out to a certain person, there's someone else reaching out to them. There's always someone that's sort of above us, and this world made it a way that we always have to work towards achieving some type of status and power. So in the midst of all that, we find ourselves in this walk through life where we're trying to make our way up to the top, but it's crazy because it says that Jesus promised us his power. When we have this power, we don't have to work for a status and achieve power. In the midst of that walk, we have the power within us. So whoever sort of works our life to the point where we feel like we're in prison or whoever's sort of outdoing us in any way, shape, or form, it's fine. Because when we're, when we're trying to make our way anywhere, we have the power of God within us. So we don't have to work for what this world is working for. So regardless what it is, if we're stuck in our prison, there's people around us. And if we want to break out of that bondage that we find ourselves in, whether that be a work, life, relationship, whatever it is, whatever that bondage is, breaking ourselves out of that, we end up breaking other people out around us. And also, the prison guard over here, he, was, he realized that Paul and Silas and the prison doors, everything was broken, and they were walking out, and he was like, man, I messed up, like, I, my job is done, right? They're gonna kill me other, anyway, let me just kill myself. So in that situation, Paul and Silas run over, and then he said, wait, wait, don't do this. Um, just come out with us, whatever. And the prison guard was like, hey, wait, so how can I be saved then? There's someone, when you're in a prison, when you're stuck in a situation in life, there's always, I feel like, someone that's sort of keeping you there, right? Um, if you're, like I said, in a work promotion, if you didn't get it, there's someone who did, and they, they always find some way to like, show it off to you. Uh, it might be a grade in a class that you couldn't get, and there's someone who did, and they like show it off to you. Um, there's always someone I feel like pushing you down. But when we release the Spirit from us, when we have that mindset of, hey, God's power is within me, I can let it out, and I don't have to worry about what others think, that's when there's full release to the people even holding you down in life. Paul and Silas are the prime examples of letting the Spirit break out. You know, we say in the song, what a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ our King. You have no rival, you have no equal. Yours is the name above all names. We have that living with inside of us. So when we walk through life, when we have the Holy Spirit within us, it dwells in us as the temple of God. When we have that, we let that Spirit break out. There's revival wherever we walk. Um, we all know the passage about the jar, um, molded by clay, and then in Luke, it actually, verse uh, chapter 8, verse 16, we don't have to read it. Um, it says, if you light the lamp and you put it in the jar and put it on the, the stand, what's the point of it? Um, I like to like little take a little twist on that. Um, when we have the Holy Spirit within us and we're the jar, there's no point to keep it enclosed in us because it doesn't show out, right? 
But imagine you take that jar and you break it a little. If there's little broken pieces around it, now the light can shine through the brokenness. None of us are perfect people, and we might be the jar, and we might be broken in some areas of our life, but in that brokenness, if we have the Holy Spirit within us, that's where it shines right out. In the midst of our brokenness, when we find release through the power of Jesus within us, we find a testimony coming out. I always say, God turns your mess into a message. In the midst of our situations, God's trying to find a way to bring other people to Christ. So my challenge tonight is, and as we hear more messages coming up, let the Holy Spirit within you break out. And God bless you with these words.